Welcome back, I'm Ted Ward, and thanks to Boston Motorsports in Brighton, Massachusetts, it's McLaren Appreciation Day. We've got a Volcano Yellow 720S to play with, and although we've driven one on the channel before, certainly not in this vibrant of color, I think it's worth treating ourselves to a little more time in the 720S because this really is the ultimate supercar of today because it's incredibly capable and it's definitely the engineer's car of the fleet because when we look at Lamborghini for example the top trumps card they've got is an SVJ and although the SVJ is a phenomenal thing and I love a V12 a single clutch gearbox still seems a little antiquated this has a seven speed dual clutch and in fact you can even see it from outside of the car when you're right here you can start to see the internals that is the gearbox under that diffuser it's phenomenal although what you don't get out of this car because it has so much visibility is the view of the engine unfortunately that v8 is tucked away but my goodness the lines on the 720 ooh, they take my breath away and it wasn't always the case i got to admit this car grew on me quite quite a lot over the last few years because when I first saw this car it looked unfinished. I did not like this headlight design. It felt like it was just gone but now the more I look at it the more I understand that it's all form meeting function. Of course it's got a carbon tub which allows for lightweight and incredible rigidity and no matter how you look at the car you're watching air being channeled through certain places and even under the door. When you come down here We've got even more ducting through there. It only weighs about 3,200 pounds. It's rear wheel drive and channeling all of that torque and power through a 305 section rear tire, 245s up front because we've got a nice tactile light front end. And that's the name of the game is this McLaren really feels like a driver's car. The dihedral doors, of course, a big theatrical exit and entrance every time you get in and out of the car. If you're not the type of person that wants to meet people at gas stations or in parking lots, like just, just don't buy this car. <laughs> I've met a lot of people today. It's been fine. I don't mind it. It's all right. But on the roof, we also have glass. So this is a really light, airy cabin. In fact, for a mid-engine supercar, this is probably the greatest visibility you're ever going to get because you have visibility all through this, what normally would be a blocked B pillar or like a flying buttress. And I'm not sure I know any other cars that do it quite this well. Let's jump in and enjoy the ride. Everything in the 720S is fairly theatrical. Let's start her up. We even have a moving display dashboard, so if you want to see how that works, we'll throw it into track mode and hit active, and then boom, here comes our track focused display. We just have that tachometer, our gear, and our speed. But I think, honestly, I think I maybe prefer the standard setup because you get more information. I mean, I can see on a racetrack that's fine, but I like to know what my temperatures are and some other information. Let's close up our dihedral door, which by the way has a soft close function. So that's always nice, you don't have to slam it. To get it into gear, you can pop that paddle over or hit drive and then the brake should release. There we go. Even Porsche doesn't do that automatic electronic brake release. I wish they would do that. The thing I love most about McLarens is just how brutally driver centric they are. Even the paddles. The paddles are just an electronic switch, right? But they make such a great click and it feels really nice in the hand. Another thing about McLaren before we get started is that these paddles are wheel mounted. So we aren't hunting for them when we're driving. They're always right at your fingertips. Let's get over this bump and see how she goes. It is a very fast vehicle. slow down with that air brake when we get into those brakes nice and heavy just in case we meet some savage geese on our way to the highway but my goodness this thing just pulls and pulls and pulls and the beauty of having that torque mixed with a great healthy amount of power way up top is that it climbs like kind of a naturally aspirated car like all the juice is still way up top even though you get a healthy bit of torque in the middle 
This car has a hydraulic suspension and all kinds of crazy hydraulic things going on. You're always listening to little whirs and pumps and clicks and things. If you're somebody who does not like to hear your vehicle other than just an engine, uh, <laughs> any McLaren is probably gonna drive you a little nuts. Let's get it out to some more open roads. This is where you start to feel how light the car is. Loads of grip. It just crawls along. This is actually a really comfortable vehicle on the highway. I mean, like, am I recommending a 720S for a daily driver? You could. It gets a lot of attention, and the attention is fun, except that sometimes people just pull up next to you with their cell phones and they're not paying attention. So that is something to be aware of when you're in a bright, flashy supercar, is that it's not just about you paying attention. A lot of times it's about other people not paying attention and they might end up causing the accident. So you do need to be aware of your surroundings. It's kind of like being a little celebrity on the road. This car kind of borders on too fast, like for the street. You know, you can get through a couple of gears and it's outrageous, but it's really hard to just stay in it. Like you could, you sure could, but you're gonna be racking up a pretty frightening ticket and potentially a lot of insurance payments later on. So you have to keep your wits about you and try to enjoy it in the spurts that you can because otherwise, I mean, this is very well capable of 200 miles an hour. It'll do it, it'll absolutely do it and it's just up to you whether or not you do it. <laughs> We're getting passed by another beautiful car. This is the 992 911, which I love. A lot more subtle than this. And you know, that's a fast car. That's still a fast car for a 4S. But this. Pretty outrageous and the theatrics are just off the charts. It's always an occasion in the 720S. but let's knock it down to all the comfort settings because oddly enough, with this suspension, it does ride really well. And I've heard people say, oh, it's like a Bentley. It is, it is certainly not like a Bentley or a Rolls Royce. We need to be very honest about that. It, it is not that good, except it is that good. It's just not that comfortable. This is a phenomenal suspension. You can tell that a lot of love and work went into the road manners of this thing. And it's worth noting that even if you're not like some crazy expert driver, it's very approachable. I mean, I feel like most people could get in this car and experiment with it a little bit without the whiplash of danger. Because I do think you, it's self-limiting. Like you wouldn't hold your foot down for too long because it will scare you. It is very quick and it just keeps pulling and pulling and pulling. Um, I'd recommend anyone who buys something like this, spend some time on a racetrack understanding vehicle dynamics just to make sure that you know how to transfer weight and the like, you know, those are, those are good skills to have. I always hate seeing folks with beautiful supercars, but basically no driving skills. Got some dirt here, we wanna be careful we don't understeer into our neighbor's mailboxes here. Visibility for a supercar, like I said, really second to none. I mean, even the even the windshield goes way down low. I can pretty much see the ground directly in front of me, which is lovely. We've already done our beauty shots. Don't have to worry about the water. And even then, this car keeping me in check with the traction control systems, not letting me spin up in the water. All right, we'll go back to sport mode, sport mode, lovely. like that. I mean, it really is a quick car. I love the way all of the inputs are so precise and intuitive. Like, you don't have to adapt that much to this car. You just get in and drive it. You just get in and drive it. And this is where McLaren, I think, does steering and brakes better than like anyone in the game. Pretty much everything today has extra damping and all this stuff to separate you from the car a little bit or kind of trick you into thinking it's sporty. This feels so just direct and Oh man, I just love driving this car. The way it loads up in a corner, even at low speeds, I mean, we're obviously not pushing the car as we can't push the car on a public road, 
kind of a ding against it. That's fine. Other thing it does really well are these brakes. They are phenomenal. And I don't just mean that they get the car down in a hurry from high speeds. I mean, the pedal feel, the interaction of the driver with this brake pedal is fantastic. You can modulate it exactly where you want and the pressure builds up. It's kind of like pushing on a piece of wood, like an old 911, like an air-cooled 911 even. Also notice this steering wheel has nothing but a horn on it. There is nothing else on this steering wheel. I have a normal blinker stock. I don't have to question where things are if I want my windshield wipers or high beams or things like that. That's just nuts. I love the way the wing comes up for that arrow. On some bumpy back roads, I mean, these are bumpy back roads. It holds its own. Like I said, we gotta, I, I, we gotta put it to bed that this does not ride like a Rolls Royce. I don't know where that notion came from. I don't know why people say that. Certainly, if you've driven this car, you know, and if you've driven a Rolls Royce, you know this does not ride like that, but it does absorb things. It does get those wheels back on the ground very quickly, and you're not concerned about whether you're gonna skip over anything. So I do like it. It does feel confidence inspiring. We'll give it that. corner, plenty of front end grip. Love the jolt from this gearbox, man. There's something about a gearbox that still gives you a little bit of drama. I mean, it's certainly not a single clutch giving that monster kick like you get in an Aventador or anything, but there's a jolt. There's enough of a jolt to let you know, like, you're in something special. This is not ordinary, guys. It's incredible. I mean, it's just, it's just really savage the way this thing gets up and goes. I, I, I can't believe how it goes from relax to rampage just instantaneously. It's phenomenal. I do love the 720S. I really do. I think, I think it's a lot of fun. The downsides of McLaren ownership are mostly in the maintenance department. I mean, if you're buying one of these cars, you probably know what you're in for. It's going to be a little trickier than some other vehicles. I mean, it's not as good, it's not going to be as robust as like an R8, for example. But you're getting a very different experience. The other downside of the car is that although it does sound good, it doesn't sound great. There are better sounding engines. However, I've got to say that when you're in the car, when that sound equals speed it's like Pavlov's dog you start hearing that sound and you salivate because it's just that good you know what's coming so that sound starts to grow on you quite a bit it may not over your headphones sound like the greatest thing in the world except that you'll get used to it and you'll appreciate it but again the real problem with fast supercars is the real world is full of traffic so unless you're planning on getting up bright and early before all the cars come out or you've got a sweet ride through the mountains to work or however you get where you go not always the best thing to have if you were looking to get your jollies off and really wind it out on the regular it can be difficult so that's the deal thank you so much for watching liking commenting and subscribing thank you especially to the patreon supporters for making this content possible any small contribution is 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 incredibly helpful and of course of course to Boston Motorsports in Brighton Massachusetts for offering me the opportunity to drive yet another phenomenal dream car of mine again I love this car this is great I love driving 720s all day long I'll drive a 720 this is incredible don't forget to respect the drive and I'll see you in the next one for the 720S if you're trying to convince your lover, your partner, your family that you really want to get this car and they think it's silly. It's pretty safe. I mean, this carbon chassis is incredible. And I mean, look, just so some people, some wrecked 720s and they, they, everybody survives. This car is great. This is definitely a car you can get in a pretty nasty accident with. It's like it's like the sports car version of a Mulzahn. You ever seen the chassis of a Mulzahn? I feel like you could flip it end over end at 100 miles an hour and you'd get out with a, just a scuff. This car is pretty similar, so you'd be in good shape if anyone's worried about you. This is a safe, fast supercar.